to the last video tutorial of the semester. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over a cueing example. And in order to motivate that, I'm going to first show you a scene here from the I Love Lucy show. It's where we have Lucy and Ethel working in a chocolate factory, and their job is to wrap the chocolates that come across the conveyor belt. Well, this is easier. Yeah, we can handle this, okay? And so from that, hopefully you got a little snippet of what uh, is happening. Essentially, these two are overutilized. They have the task of wrapping the candies or the chocolates, and they start coming at a much faster rate, and they can't handle it. So essentially, the system is not stable in this scenario, and they're overutilized. And so instead of just wrapping the candies, they start eating the candies or trying to hide the candies in their hat and where... Uh, their chef garb here. And so we're going to take this problem and generalize it. So we're not going to take the overutilization problem, but we're going to generalize it and model it as an MM27Q. So that's two servers where we have Lucy and Ethel, these two here, and a finite system capacity of seven pieces of chocolate. So we can only have seven pieces of chocolate either waiting uh, or being currently being processed. We assume an average service time here as the time to wrap a piece of candy, eat it, or hide it. Assume that they're all the same. And that's one minute. And assume this, uh, since we have the service time here, we can get the service rate uh, mu, which is just one over one, so mu is one. We also assume that 65 pieces of chocolate arrive every hour at a constant rate. And we have the task of finding L, LQ, W, and WQ for this system. And so if we were going to draw the diagram for this problem, we have our 0 to 7 states. And then we have lambda here going across the top and mu going across the bottom. So you can have a, mu, or a lambda 0 up to lambda 7 and then mu 0 to mu 7. So I'm not going to fill in the actual values here. We can do that in Excel, but it's essentially your arrival rate and your service rate going backwards. And so with this problem, I'm going to do it in Excel. And here I have my 0 through 7 states, your n values, and I'm going to type in lambda. So lambda here, I was told that there are 65 pieces of candy that arrive every hour. So for one unit of time, I can have 65 over 60 minutes. So a little over one piece of candy every minute. And I can copy this over up till six. And then once I get to seven, I do not have a uh, arrival rate here. For mu, because I have two servers, I need to be careful on what my transition is backwards. And so for mu zero here, I have a zero. For one, mu one, I know I can have one going backwards because essentially only one server would be busy. But for all the rest, I can have a rate of two because I have two servers. Uh. And so I want, that's the given. Those are my information. And I want to find L, L, Q, W, and W, Q. And there's a variety of different equations that have been given to you in order to solve these problems. And so one equation for L is to multiply n times p. But we don't, we have n, but we don't have p. And so if I was going to give you some advice for the exam, I would take a piece of paper and write down every equation that you know involving these different parameters that you want to solve because there are different ways to solve it and just having them in a nice local place to say well I have P or I have lambda you know how do I finagle or work out this equation and so to get L 
I need both P and N. And so I don't have P, but I know I can get my C values, and then from C I can get P. And so here C, I'm going to put C0 equals 1, and then I know for the rest of my C values, it just equals the lambda of, let's say this was C, so lambda of C I minus 1 divided by mu of 1 times C0. And I can copy this over across all the rest to get all of my C values. So all this is here is the lambda of the previous one. So if I'm looking C1, it's lambda 0 divided by mu 1 times C1, or C0. Now I need to get my P values. And so my P0 just equals 1 over the sum of all the C values. For everything higher than P0, so P1 through P7 here, it just equals its corresponding cost, so P1 here just equals C1 times P0. Ooh. And I'm going to lock here P0, because everything is times P0. So here, this is essentially C2 times P0. And so then I can just carry this across. and get all of my p-values. One gut check, you know that all of your p-values should sum to 1. So if you're going to check this, let's hope it works, the sum of this should equal 1, in which it does. And so now we have all of these different parameters, and now we want to solve for L first. That's uh, a nice. And so we know that L equals for every n value, the sum of its n times its probability. So it's essentially 0 times this 30% plus 1 times this 32.5, so on and so forth. And so we can accomplish that with the sum product of our n and our probabilities. And so with this, we get L to be about 1.46. To get, we would then, we know by Little's Law that L equals lambda W. But that assumes that we have the same lambda across all. And so here we do not have the same lambda. So we need to calculate lambda bar. So essentially the expected lambda value. And to get that, I'm just taking the probability but I'm in this particular n value, times its lambda. So we're going to think it's about 1.08, but because we don't have, we have a finite capacity here, we're not leaving 7. We don't have that arrival rate out of 7. It's, it's going to be a little bit less than 1.08. So again, this is a sum product, because we're taking the expectation of our lambda times its probability. See, it's about 1.083. You know, it's just this little bit that's preventing me from getting that 1.08. And so from that, I know that L equals lambda W, so I can get W from these two values. And that just equals L divided by lambda bar. So I have W. What else do I know? I know WQ equals, or W equals WQ plus 1 over mu. And in our given, uh, we're going to use the mu that was originally given. So we know it equals 1, or 1 over mu, that uh, time, the service time, is going to be 1. And so here, I just say, I switch it around, WQ equals W minus the 1 over mu, or in this case, just 1. So essentially here, it takes one unit for this item to be processed, and it waits for 0.35 minutes in the queue. From that, I can also calculate LQ, again using a variation of little law, where we have LQ equals lambda bar WQ. I can take LQ just to equal 
the multiplication of those two. Lambda bar W cube. And that's my LQ value. And so with this, there's mul as I said, there's multiple ways to calculate many of these different parameters. And I would highly recommend writing out those equations so that you can see what you have and figure things out from that. Well, thank you for a great semester. It's been fun. Any last minute feedback would be great. Also, I have a teaching assistant evaluation on my website for those that have come either watch the videos or come to office hours. I would greatly appreciate any feedback that you have. So best of luck on the final and have a great holiday and break.